Hello, I'm Kenya Ju, reporting on hot style trends from industry insiders. There is a growing demand for formal ethnic wear, and to help us understand this trend, we'll be speaking with a designer who specializes in ethnic bridal wear. Kimo Ray is the owner of TK Designs, a fashion house specializing in bridal wear located in Houston, Texas. Hi, Kima. How are you? Hi, Kenya. How are you? Um, well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. No problem. <laughs> so, Kima, tell us, what's fueling this trend in ethnic formal wear and bridal fashions? Today, there are more and more people that want to celebrate their culture and incorporate elements of the heritage into their wedding. And I think as we become more global, in this digital age, you know, with internet and television, more people are being exposed to ethnic fashion. They're being exposed to other cultures. And I think that being exposed to other cultures lends uh, the awareness that the consumers need. And so they're more aware, they're more educated, and they're more accepting of ethnic cultures and ethnic fashions. And I think that is fueling the demand for more and more designers to feature ethnic wear for bridal and formal. That's wonderful. And, and what is the bride to be looking for in ethnic formal wear? I think a lot of times the brides are looking for something um, different and uh, they want to incorporate elements of their culture. So that could also mean using the fabrics like the Guinea brocade or the Ashoke or, or the Kente that's hand weave in Ghana. Or, or using the saris you know, from India, or the avoid uh, lace. And I think in using those type of materials into a westernized or European type design, it's very appealing. Also the use of symbols such as the Adingra symbols uh, that are typically used in, in various parts of Ghana. They have set a meaning to the symbols, like the Sankofa symbol uh, means going back to your roots or the GME means the supremacy of God. And uh, the An symbol is also very popular. It's an Egyptian hieroglyphic symbol for life. And I see a lot of brides are incorporating these symbols into their wedding gowns and also into their wedding attire. And they're also outfitting their attires with beads and uh, kari shells or stones and also making the hairpiece and their veils to match the dresses. And I think that uh, brides are looking to incorporate the use of these ethnic fabrics into a westernized or European type design dress or that is fitted uh, to their proportions. Also, I see brides are using uh, beads and trims and also cowrie shells and accenting that into their wedding gowns and making it for a very beautiful outfit. The use of embroidery is also very popular and uh, I usually see brides wearing a white or ivory gown but have a different color embroidery uh, stitched onto their, their outfits. Wow, that sounds beautiful. Now you talked a little bit about color. What significance does color play in the selection and design process? Although white and ivory are still the most popular color of choice for the traditional wedding gown, for ethnic bridal, uh, color is very significant in the sense that there is a meaning to the colors. Uh, for example, gold means wealth and prosperity in, in Africa, and green also represents life, purple for royalty. In India and China, red is a very popular color for the wedding gowns. Uh, in China, red represents happiness and joy, as represented by the fire, which is full of energy. So I think what we're finding is that brides are looking to incorporate the colors into their wedding gowns because there is a meaning to it based on their culture. Oh, wow. With, with all of the various African cultures, what are some differences <laughs> that we can see when designing bridal wear? Um, in terms of the African uh, culture, I think the typical um, outfit is typically the, the booba, which is the loose fitted gown, uh, blouse, and uh, the, the wrapper or the lapa, which is like a wrap around skirt. 
and uh, there's always a headpiece associated with their outfits. Uh, it's a head tie or head wrap or the the galleries. Uh, for the men, we see a lot of the, the four-piece outfits, which includes the anbara, which is like a gown, with the tashiki, which is the shirt and the trousers, and a poofy hat. And I think the use of the cotton fabrics is very popular because of the, the, the climate over there. Wow. And as a fashion designer, what inspired you to specialize in ethnic formal wear? I think what really triggered that was um, I've always been interested in, in ethnic wear. But when I came to the United States, to I attended Howard University in Washington, D.C., and I was very inspired because when I was wearing my traditional clothing to go to school, my fellow uh, classmates or students would stop me and admire the, the, the clothes that I was wearing, and they felt that it was very beautiful. And I, and I think I wanted to show the world the beauty of our culture and uh, beyond just my, my classmates that were in school. And that was one of the inspiring uh, moments for starting TK Designs. Another turning point was when I went to Ghana in 2001, and I was able to work with the local craftsmen and the craftswomen and the artists there. And I actually saw how they were weaving the kente cloth and I saw how they were stitching the embroidery onto the garments there. And I was very inspired and I wanted to show the world the beauty of their creativity uh, beyond just their environment. And that was one of the turning points. Uh, in addition, I've traveled to other countries you know, throughout the world, including Mexico, Brazil, Colombia, India, Scotland. And I was able to work with local people there and I see how they were making the jewelry and I wanted to show the world how beautiful their, arm, their garments are by incorporating elements of these cultures into my wedding gowns and African ethnic wear. Wow, what a wonderful experience to have. And thank goodness that you're able to share that with, with all of us here through your designs. Tell us a, a little bit about your customer. Are they predominantly Africans who reside in the Houston area? Uh, my customers uh, really are international. I mean, they're, we find my customers are also here in the States. Uh, I don't necessarily cater to any geographic uh, location. Uh, as you know, I'm a mail order business. I also have a showroom here in Houston for those customers who do want to come in and get measured and get fitted here. But with the internet and the globalization, I think my customers, any bride who wants an upscale custom-made wedding gown or it could be a groom or a groomsman who wants to have an outfit to wear to his wedding or to a formal uh, occasion. Also, my customers can be a flower girl or a ring bearer in a wedding. I cater to all sizes, all ages. Uh, it could be someone celebrating their 25th or the 50th wedding anniversary. And I think I, I have a lot to offer in terms of uh, not just the ethnic, but the, the ethnic um, maternity wear as well. So I also cater to uh, the entire broader party. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, now you spoke a bit about your travels and all of your experience, but can you tell our viewers, how do you differ from other designers across the country who, speci who also specialize in ethnic formal wear? I think my differences are uh, the diversity of my clothing line. I have a very extensive collection, you know, for the bride and also for the groom and the entire bridal party. I can even outfit the, the ushers and the hostesses, the mother of the bride and the father of the bride. And I think because I offer that, that also is an advantage because some designers only offer wedding gowns, you know, for the bride only. But you can actually come to me and I offer the entire bridal party. In addition to that, I offer uh, different sizes and uh, for tall, for medium, for petite, and regular sizes. My order line is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as well as my website. And I think my customer service is excellent. I'm very personable and easy to talk to. I also have a very uh, good electronic measurement uh, questionnaire as well as sizing charts to help my customers determine 
or what the measurements will be uh, for those who are not able to come to, to see me in Houston. And I think because of all that I offer, that distinguishes me for, from the others. Wow, that's wonderful. You know, there's, there's a lot of talk about um, the fashion industry now catering towards smaller women or petite women. Um, TK Designs, what, what body types do you create for and specialize in? I specialize in, in all body types. Um, and I think every woman, every figure is uh, special. Um, I have dresses that can be worn by someone who is petite as well as a regular sized woman. And I have outfits that can be worn by someone who's tall. And I think that, you know, that gives my customers the choice that they need because sometimes they may not be able to find that size in the store. It could be a non-standard size because there are some women who are not a standard uh, size two or a standard size six. I mean, they're not proportioned in that manner. So the, the custom-made option works very well for them. And, and that's what I offer. That's wonderful. Now, we spoke a lot about the fashion garments that you offer. Do you also have accessories for your clientele? Sure. I have the veils and the head pieces, and I also have uh, custom jewelry. And in fact, I just launched a new line of custom jewelry that has the, the necklace and the earring and the bracelet sets. And uh, they are made with uh, very lovely material. Uh, they are made to match with my ethnic gowns. And some of them have the beadings and the, and the shells to, to match with the outfit and the colors to match with the embroidery and the dress. I also have uh, a lot of the uh, trimmings, like the, the stones, uh, to go with the wedding gowns. Uh, so I think the, that is one of the things that I bring to the table. Wonderful. What style tips can you suggest for our viewers um, now that we have a new season upon us? What, what style tips can you offer to them? When planning a, an ethnic wedding, I suggest starting, you know, six months to a year in advance. You know, that gives time, you know, to pick out your, your dresses in time for the vendors to, to make them. I suggest, you know, from, a, from an ethnic perspective, looking for designers that offer authentic uh, ethnic fashions. There are a lot of mass productions out there a lot of imitation material out there. If you want something really authentic, you have to really look for designers that are catering to, to that market. And that's one of the things that I, I do offer. So thank you, Kima. So tell our viewers, what can they expect to see from TK Designs in the future? My dream is to showcase ethnic fashions from various countries around the world. Um, so I plan to actually have the local versions of designs from India and from Asia and from other parts of Africa, such as South Africa and North Africa, and expand my collection to touch more and more cultures throughout the world. Wow. Well, that sounds wonderful. And we're so looking forward to seeing you and your growth in TK Designs. Um, thank you so much, Kima, for your knowledge and insight about the growing fashion trends in ethnic formal wear and bridal wear. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. We truly appreciate it. Thank you. I'm fashion correspondent Kenya Ju, reporting on hot fashion tips from industry insiders. Thanks for watching.